Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Worship at Faith this morning. So incredibly glad that you are joining us here this morning. Uh, just a quick reminder that we will have communion as a part of this morning's worship. And so, um, <clears throat> excuse me, invite you to have bread and grape juice or wine close by so that um, you can participate in that. And all are welcome to participate in the Lord's meal today. And um, we'll do that a little later in the service, but you can um, take this moment if you don't have those elements with you to um, be sure and have them close by. Again, welcome from wherever you're joining us this morning. We're so glad that you've chosen to worship with us this morning. Um, as we begin this morning, our host family for this morning is the Johnston family. And so um, I'd like to give them a chance to introduce themselves to you. So I'm going to turn it over to uh, Kristen Haley and Sabrina. Good morning. Uh, like Jane said, I'm Kristen. I'm Haley. I'm Sabrina. Um, and we're really excited to be a part of the service this morning. Um, Jane said to give you guys a little bit of insight, a little background. Um, what I thought about is you know, how life has been very different lately. Um, but for us, it changed in February when we adopted um, a large breed puppy who is now six months old and 70 pounds. And so we've been learning to adjust to life with a, a large breed puppy, um, learning about the reality of having a large breed dog in our house. And um, he's a great dog. Uh, still has a lot of learning to do, as do we, but we're really excited to have him as as we've gone on this COVID journey, and he's been a blessing to have in our house as well. So. <laughs> hey folks, we got some more introductions to do today. I am uh, thrilled to be joined by Natasha, who has stopped by today um, uh, to make sure that she can uh, play with us. So we actually will have more than just one instrument uh, at least here at the Barber Home. And so, Natasha, I'm going to let you go ahead and introduce yourself. Yeah, good morning, everyone. I'm really thrilled to get to do this. I miss being with everybody every Sunday, so this is just a treat. And uh, I guess one random fact is I've been drumming for 31 years, which is kind of hard to admit, but 31 which, years. Which so. is weird because you're only 25, I so know, that's not even like time nutty. I don't know how that it's happens. Cool. I used to be a part of a time warp, apparently. <laughs> so, yeah. so that, and then also I love baseball, and so one of my dreams is someday to get to every ballpark. Uh, so far, I've been to 18, so I still have a few more to go, but that's something about me, so. Awesome. Yeah, so glad to be here. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. All right. We are going to go ahead and start with our uh, with our call to worship this morning, <clears throat> and so invite you all to join us and sing this song, which we have been uh, which we've been enjoying for uh, for many months now. Here in this place, a new light is streaming. Now is the darkness vanished away. See in this space our fears and our dreamings brought here to you in the light of this day. And gather us in the lost and forsaken. Gather us in the blind and the lame. Call to us now, and we shall awaken, we shall arise at the sound of our name. Not in the dark of buildings confining, not in some heaven light years away, but here in this place, the new light is shining. Now is the kingdom, and now is the day. And gather us in, and hold us forever. Gather us in, and make us your own. Gather us in, all oh people together. Fire of love in our flesh and our bones. Well, it is great to be God's church, whether we're sitting in a building together or we're sitting online together, um, worshiping and praising our God. And we talk a lot about being the church at work in the world. And um, another way to say that is being the church without walls. 
And um, we have literally been doing that for months, um, but it's also more than just not meeting together um, in one place. But being a church without walls means that we understand that our entire lives are to be lived in praise and um, to give glory to God. And so um, some chances to be able to do that this week. Um, kids camp, those of you who are involved in kids camp, um, you know that you should have picked up your your um, toolbox or whatever that, um, so you have your supplies and things to be doing that. Um, this Wednesday will be the first worship, Kids Camp Worship Live. And, um, and so watch, if you're signed up for Kids Camp, watch for that sign up. It's a, it'll be a, a sign up every single week. And um, so watch for that coming in your email and you do need to sign up in order to be able to come to Worship Live on Wednesday nights. So um, we're excited about that. So um, come and join us on Wednesday night for Kids Camp Worship Live. And then also thanks to all of you who have already given um, to help our friends in Bolivia. And um, there is still time to give more if you would like. Uh, the, our friends down in Monte Rancho are being hit um, incredibly hard by, um, in particular, the economic impacts of this pandemic time. And so, um, and so if you would like to give towards their Food for the Hungry's initiative, Healthy Homes, um, which is helping them have um, healthy food supplies, as well as continued uh, training in, um, in hygiene and how to, how to stay safe in a time of pandemic, um, you can give that, you can, in the, the email that came with your worship link this morning, there's also a link for the bulletin. And, um, and in that bulletin there, it tells you the ways that you can give either by text or you can send um, a check to the church office as well. And uh, we're going to have Juan Pablo joining us in uh, one of these weeks here as soon as we can get all the um, details and our schedules to align. Um, and with that, please pray for Juan Pablo's wife, Mirna, as um, this past week she um, was diagnosed with COVID-19. So keep her in your prayers um, and their whole family as well. And so it is the summer of Love Does. And so I've got my t-shirt on today and um, want to continue to invite you to, as you're out and about, wear your t-shirts, take pictures of what you're doing, send them to me. Jane at faithgolden.org. Um, even if you don't have a t-shirt and you're out and about sharing the love of God um, or out and about having a good time, just send us pictures of what you're doing or post them to the Facebook, the Faith Facebook web, uh, web page. I'm going to try that one again. The Faith Facebook page. There we go. Um, and um, we would love to be able to see what you're doing and how you are spending um, your summer of love does this summer. Um, and so, yeah, send us pictures and um, tell us what you're doing and let us know because we'd love to be able to share that with others as well. And then just a couple this time and when we're not able to see each other as much, um, I want to make you aware of a couple of people um, happenings in the life of um, our faith community. We want to wish our um, best blessings on Mark and Linda Sandgren. Um, they are moving to North or to South Dakota, um, about 400 miles away from here. They're moving up to be closer to family, and they're in the midst of that transition this weekend. And so, while we are so sad to see them leave faith, um, we wish them God's blessings on this new chapter in their lives, closer to family in South Dakota. And then yesterday, I had the the um, the joy of being able to uh, officiate at Stacy Tilton and Wyatt Kimbrough's wedding. Many of you know Stacy. Um, she's been a long time uh, face at faith. And uh, Stacy and Wyatt joined their lives and marriage yesterday. And, um, and so we celebrate with them. They're going to be making their home here in Golden. And so um, hopefully we'll have the chance um, to introduce Wyatt to all of you as well in the coming months. But we pray uh, God's blessings on Stacy and Wyatt and this new step in their life as well. That's it, I think, for, um, but it's never it, right? Because there's always ways that we can find ways to love on people, to share God's love out in the world, whether it's a smile, whether it's helping somebody out. Um, we get to be the church without walls every single day. And one of, the uh, one of the things that we get to do as God's people is share God's peace with each other. And so I want to invite you to do that this morning. Do that with whoever's in your home with you through a handshake or a hug and in the words. 
got students to be with you, but I also invite you to pick up your phones and um, and to share God's peace with those who aren't um, sitting in the room with you as well. We're going to take a few minutes to do that right now. Chris is going to play um, underneath while we do that. And so and, um, start this time off by wishing you, may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Will you share the peace of the Lord with each other then? So today we are continuing our series, um, talking about the, the our playlist for life, different songs and different types of songs in our lives. And uh, today is all about songs that praise. And so um, we're going to continue our worship this morning with one of my favorite hymns, uh, Praise to the Lord the Almighty. And so I invite you to join with us as we sing our praise to the Lord this morning.
and another hymn of praise. readings are Psalm 9, 1 through 2, and 7 through 11, and Luke 1, 68 through 75. Psalm 9, 1 through 2, 7 through 11. I will give thanks to you, Lord, with all of my heart. I will tell of all your wonderful deeds. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing the praises of your name, O Most High. The Lord reigns forever. He has established his throne for judgment. He rules the world in righteousness and judges the people with equality. The Lord is a refuge for the oppressed and a stronghold in times of trouble. 
Those who know your name trust in you, for you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. Sing the praises of the Lord, enthroned in Zion. Proclaim among the nations what he has done. And Luke 1, 68 through 75. His father Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied. Praise be the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has come to his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he said through his holy prophets of long ago. Salvation from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. An oath he swore to our father Abraham to rescue us from the hands of our enemies and to enable us to serve him without fear in the holiness and righteousness before him all our days. Yeah, it's been a lot of weeks since this has happened, but now <laughs> we finally get to say, Jane, unmute yourself. There we go. Now, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah we got you. Okay. Great. Awesome. So the internet at Jane's house is a little funky this morning. And so um, we'll try that one again. All right. So um, I will give thanks to you, Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of your wonderful deeds. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing the praise of your name, O Most High. That psalm that Haley just read for us, it's a song of praise and adoration. It's a song that lifts God up for who God is and what God has done. And hey, that's Jane, before yeah. you get too far. You just <laughs> sorry, that is a your uh, I just your camera switched. Oh, so, you're, just, so just real quick. Just so Okay, you know. hang on. Everybody got everything on the uh, on the song or the the psalm and uh, as and the song of praise. So we got all that. Thank you. Okay. So you just need my camera. Nope, it's still funky. Okay, hang on a second. Um, my whole, my whole, when my internet went out and came back on my whole view. So let's see if we can do. We got gotcha. you. All right. Well, you're gonna. It's gonna be a little funky because I have to look over here to see my notes. So let's move this a little bit. There we go. We'll try this. You know, it's always a new experience on Sunday mornings. So, um, praise, yes, let's refocus, let's <laughs> praise God for uh, the fact that we do have um, technology that allows us to do these things, right? Even when it doesn't work just perfectly. But praise is lifting God up for who God is and what God has done. It's not asking for something, it's not compelling us to do anything except worship our God. Now we can sing to remember, we can sing to learn, we can, we can sing and lament, we can, we can sing to hear the promises of God, we can do all of those things. But there is nothing like songs of praise. Songs of praise usher us into the presence of our God. The word song, the, the word um, praise actually comes, Deb, we're not quite there yet. We still have a little ways to go <laughs> before we get to the, the slides. So, um, or maybe I'm just seeing something that isn't up live. Yeah, I'm just you're, gonna- You're good. Okay, good. Not live yet. <laughs> okay, awesome, great. So like I said, my whole thing is funky. So and this is beautiful. All right, see now you get to see Jane when she is punting in all kinds of ways. So let's go back to that whole idea of praise. The word praise actually has a French origin from a word that means to prize. And what a great glimpse of what praise really is. Praise, to praise God means to prize God, to hold in high esteem, to cherish, to value. 
When we praise God, we recognize God's might and power. We speak, we sing of God's worth in our lives. How sad then is it when we let the songs and the words of praise become simply words we hear, or because the words are so common, um, we say them or we sing them without even really thinking about what it is that we're singing or saying. For instance, have you ever realized that the Lord's Prayer actually begins and ends with praise? Our Father who art in heaven, holy or hallowed be your name. And then it ends, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. How often do we say these words? And, and they're simply words we say, or they're lines that are so familiar that we can think about other things as we say them. In my younger years, I used to get frustrated sometimes at the liturgy that we use in our service, in like in our first service at faith. I, I get frustrated because while I knew that they were beautiful phrases, um, what, and when I thought about them, the words captured my heart. But how often did I and others simply sing those lines without really thinking about what we say we were, we were saying? For instance, a part of our Lutheran liturgy goes like this. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy. How many times have we sung that and not really thought about the fact that we are singing praise and prayer to God in those words? Or these words, right? Worthy is Christ, the lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God, power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and blessing and glory are his. Sing with all the people of God and join in the hymn of all creation. Blessing, honor, glory, and might be to God and the Lamb forever. Amen. When was the last time, those of you who sing this, when was the last time you really thought about those words as you sang them? That you let them truly be a song of thoughtful praise from your lips. Now, I know it's been a long time since we've actually sung them, but I'm saying before the pandemic. When was the last time that you sang those words and really meant every word that you sang? Or those of you who are part of our contemporary worship or part of have been a part of us online here, like you're not off the hook either. Because when we were in our building, how often do we see the music at the beginning of worship as the, oh, look, the music is beginning. Let's grab a donut and a cup of coffee before we go in cue. Or the, oh, there's two more songs after this. We've still got time, right? Like we sing at the beginning of worship, not just to cover up the people who are coming in late, but so that we can shift from our focus in the world to our focus being praising God. Even now, there's a reason we sing, gather us in the lost and forsaken. Not in the dark of buildings confining, not in some heaven light years away, but here in this place, a new light is shining. Now is the kingdom. Now is the day. It's not because we can't just find another song to start worship with, but it is a song of praise, of declaration. This is what we believe about our God and about us and about this time. When we praise God, it should be with our entire being, body, soul, and spirit. Now, that doesn't mean that you have to put your hands in the air, 
dance. You can, but you don't have to. Does it mean that you have to dance in the aisles or in your home? But you can. It doesn't mean you have to sing loud or even sing good, though you can. But what it means is that all that I am is focused on God, who God is and what God has done. And I give praising God my all. Please know this, it's not about somehow saying or singing the right words. It's not about being just eloquently poetic. It's not about using the most flowery words or the most theological words that we can find. Doesn't That isn't what it's about. Too often, I think that because some people have a way with words, many of us think that we can't praise out loud because our words aren't the right words or, or we don't know how to be creative enough. What the words are really don't matter as much as the heart, the life behind those words. That's what gives God pleasure. So whether you're a dance in the aisles, hands in the air kind of person, or you're a quiet, close my eyes, let my heart surge towards the heart of God type of person, or something in between or mix of, as long as your heart is connected to the praise of the true one, you're doing it right. And don't let anyone tell you different. Now, there are some songs that just simply lend themselves to putting ourselves in that place where we can connect to the presence of God. Deb is going to put up some slides. I'm just going to sing some parts of some of my favorites this morning. And you can sing with if you want. But what I really want you to do is pay attention to the words that I, we are singing this morning. Because they are words of praise. So don't get so caught up in the music that you forget what it is that you are saying or we are saying this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah, for the Lord God Almighty reigns. Hallelujah. Alleluia, for the Lord God Almighty reigns. Alleluia, holy, holy, are you Lord God Almighty? Worthy is the Lamb, worthy is the Lamb, you are holy, holy, are you Lord God Almighty, worthy is the Lamb, worthy is the Lamb, Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I'll worship your holy name. O oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the works thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout. 
the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Amazing, isn't it? We can sing songs again and again. We can hear them all the times and they, they transport us to all kinds of memories and things like that. We talked about that, things that help us remember, but songs also lift our hearts and connect them to the heart of God. I think for me, it's those songs that that give you goosebumps, right? That I love the most. Give me the those holy ghost bumps, maybe that's what it is. I don't know, but that really put me in the presence of God. And and we can ask, like, why is praise so important? It's like, well, yeah, we praise all the time, but but think of how your soul feels, even just after those snippets of those songs. Praise readjusts our focus. Praise can heal our soul. Praise can calm a troubled spirit. Praise can shout out our joy. Praise can convey feelings that we can't put into words otherwise. Praise truly connects our heart to the heart of God and brings us fully into the presence, as fully as we can on this earth, into the presence of God. I've heard many say, and, I, and I've even said it myself sometimes, like, where the heck is God? I don't know. I don't feel God present in my life. Well, let me tell you this. First of all, God is always presence, whether, present, whether we feel like his presence or not. God is always present. So it's just a matter of how aware we are of God's presence. And I believe that when we take time to really praise God wholeheartedly, not just saying the words or singing the lines, but being fully present, our souls become more aware of God's presence around us. And just as praise brings us into God's presence, there are things that get in the way of that then. Sometimes it's simply our attitudes. Right? Like it's selfish. I, I want things my way, not really God's way. Or I'm mad at God. Right? Or sometimes it's our focus or, or maybe we say the lack thereof. Right? It's our, our busyness or our focus on the world or all the things that have to happen today. Sometimes what gets in our way is our own pain or our brokenness. Life is not always great. And when our woundedness or, or when that, that question, why God, why takes over, and right? it is really hard sometimes to feel God's presence. Sometimes it's just our own stubbornness that gets in the way. And I think some days the only way to get around those blocks is to turn our hearts to God and praise. Even when we don't feel like it, even maybe when we don't want to. Zechariah knew this. Zechariah, whose, whose song um, Sabrina read for us earlier, Zechariah was a priest. He was a, he, and he was given the high and holy um, task of being able to go into the holy of holies. And that wasn't something that just anybody got to do. And you only usually got to do it once in your lifetime. And it was such a special place that they they would tie a rope around your ankle. So if something happened to you in there, they would be able to bring you out because nobody but, but that one priest was allowed into the Holy of Holies once a year. And Zechariah goes in and he encounters an angel and he learns that even at his old age, he's going to become a dad. And Zechariah, like any of the rest of us, doubts that. And so the angel goes, to prove that I'm telling the truth, you are not going to be able to speak. Until your son is born. And think about that. For nine months, John had all this time to think about who God is and what God can do. 
And so when his son is born, Zechariah names him what the angel has told him, that you will name him John. And as soon as Zechariah declares that John is the baby's name, then Zechariah's voice is opened and he sings the song. Right, Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has come to his people and redeemed them. What an amazing first line of praise to God that Zechariah sang. I pray for us today that our first thought of God each day would be one of praise. And I pray that our last thought of God each night would be a note of praise. That we would proclaim the greatness of our God. That we would proclaim who our God is. The way we say that around faith is being the hands, feet, and voice of Jesus in the world. Right? That's how we proclaim who God is. If God is love, then we, his followers, need to show up with love. Hence the summer of love does. Right? If God is is amazing and can work wonders, then we get to be God's hands and feet and we get to be amazing and show up and do wonders for people, right? We do all of that so that our very lives sing praise to God. My prayer is that that is what my life does. My prayer today for you is that it, that's what your life does. So today, why don't you just make a, maybe make a new playlist of all those favorite songs that um, just put your heart in the presence of God and sing his praise that all might know of the wonderfulness of our God. Will you pray with me, please? Dear God, you are holy and you are mighty. You are a miracle worker. You are the creator of all that we see and are. And God, this morning we praise you for who you are and for what you have done and for what you promised to do. Let our hearts be lifted to you in a song of praise this day and every day. Knowing that even in the darkest times, we can still choose to praise you. The God who is Emmanuel, God with us. The God who knows our heartbreak and our pain and knows our joys and rejoicing and celebration and everything in between. May our lives give you praise. Pray this in your name and power, Jesus. Amen. <laughs>
lift your voice to hero jubilee how does zion feel salvation come God like Jehovah, there is no 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 God like Jehovah. 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 Behold, He comes, shining on the He's shining like the sun. At the trumpet call, lift your voice. It's a year of jubilee. Out of Zion, till salvation comes. Behold, He comes, riding on the clouds. Shining like the sun at the trumpet call, lift your voice. It's a year of jubilee. Out of Zion Hill, salvation come. Out of Zion Hill, salvation come. Out of Zion Hill, salvation come. Yeah. Woo! can't not do that when you got a drummer you know what i'm saying <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh well it's awesome thanks jim thanks natasha this is so great we isn't it amazing that like we get to praise our god anywhere anytime any place and one of the things that we can praise him for one of the great gifts that he has given us is this meal of bread and wine of grace and salvation and so whoever is your communion host in your family this morning, I invite you um, to pick up the bread and to say these words with me as we gather at his table this morning. On the night Jesus showed his greatest love for us, he took a piece of bread, gave thanks for it, and blessed it, and gave it to his disciples as he gives to us today, saying, take and eat. For this is my body given for you. So when you eat of this bread, do it and remember me. Then I invite you to pick up the grape juice or the wine and say with me. After supper, he took a cup of wine. He gave thanks for it and blessed it and gave it to his disciples as he gives it to us today, saying, take and drink. For this is the new promise in my blood, which is shed for you and all people for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Whenever you drink from this cup, do it and remember me. And as we remember, then I invite you to pray with me this prayer of praise, this prayer that Jesus has given us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So this morning, as you partake in um, this meal, bread and wine, grace and forgiveness, invite you to, to take a piece of bread and say to each other, this is the body of Christ given for you. And when you dip it in the wine or take a drink of the wine or grape juice, say this is the blood of Christ shed for you. And if you happen to be um, by yourself this morning, then I pray that you will be reminded and know that um, you take this meal with the entire communion of saints this morning. Once you're done receiving communion, then I invite you into a time of prayer as Chris plays for us, a time where we can pray and praise our God, but also a time to focus on how can I give, what can I offer to God this week? 
And maybe it's your faithfully giving of your offerings, your monetary offerings to the community of faith or to the other places that um, you give. Uh, maybe it's the offering of yourself. How might you offer yourself to God this week? Um, but think about that. Pray about that as a way of responding to this meal of grace and forgiveness that we received this morning. I invite you now, come, eat, and be fed. Let us pray. Lord, today we pray for the world as we face COVID-19. We pray for wisdom for medical professionals and researchers as they learn more about this virus. We pray for peace and healing for those whose health and whose loved one's health has been affected by COVID. We pray for patience for the world as all adjust to an ever-changing normal. We also pray for listening, understanding, communication for the world leaders, members of our communities, local government and law enforcement, as we try to move towards true equality for all. Lord, please be with everyone in whatever capacity it is that they need you in the coming days and weeks ahead. Amen. And now, please receive God's blessing. May the love of the Father, the tenderness of the Son, and the presence of the Spirit gladden your heart and bring peace to your soul this day and all days. Amen. Thanks, Johnston family. That was fantastic. And as we, uh, <clears throat> as we depart today, I just invite you all to remember that no matter where you are, you are in the Father's house. And it is because of that, praise is always appropriate.
sometimes on this journey I get lost in my mistakes What looks to me like weakness Is a canvas for your strength and My story isn't over My story just begun And failure won't define me Cause that's what my father does Failure won't define me Cause that's what my father does Lay your burdens down Ooh, Here in the Father's house Check your shame at the door It ain't welcome anymore Ooh, You're in the Father's house, Bible's not the end game, the journey's where you are. You never want it perfect, you just want it by heart. And the story isn't over, if the story isn't good. Cause failure's never final, when the father's in the room. Failure's never final, when the father's in the room. Oh, lay your burdens down Ooh, Here in the Father's house Check your shame at the door It ain't welcome anymore Ooh, You're in the Father's house, yeah Prodigals come home, the helpless find hope. Love is on the move when the father's in the room. Prison doors fling wide, the dead come to life. Love is on the move when the father's in the room. Cause miracles take place and the cynical find faith. Love is breaking through when the father's in the room. The Jericho walls are quaking, the strongholds now are shaking. Love is breaking through, yeah, when the father's in the room. And love is breaking through when the father's in the room. Oh, lay your burdens down, come on. My father's house, check your shame at the door. It ain't welcome anymore. Ooh, you're in the father's house, check your shame at the door. It ain't welcome anymore. Ooh, you're in the father's house. God bless you all. Continue praise throughout the week, and we'll see you next time.